330 tons of thrust per engine, 33 engines working together. That's 10,890 tons of total liftoff thrust, three times what NASA's legendary Saturn V could deliver. And here's the part that should worry Blue Origin. This isn't some distant dream. Elon Musk confirmed these numbers himself at Starbase, laying out exactly what Raptor 4 will achieve. But raw power is only half the story. What if I told you this beast of an engine will also cost less than half of what earlier Raptors did? How does SpaceX keep pushing both performance and affordability while competitors struggle to keep up? Let's dive right in. During that Starbase walkthrough with Everyday Astronaut, Musk didn't actually use the term Raptor 4 out loud. He simply mentioned a thrust figure, 330 tons. And anyone tracking SpaceX's engine evolution immediately understood what that meant. Raptor 3 sits at roughly 280 tons. A 50-ton jump isn't a minor tweak or software update. That's a fundamental redesign. That's a new generation. So why does this specific number matter so much? Because it pushes Super Heavy's total liftoff thrust past 10,890 tons using all 33 engines a threshold Musk has been targeting for years. Back in December, he explained the goal clearly. Hit 10,000 metric tons at liftoff, roughly tripling Saturn V's legendary power. Raptor 4 doesn't just meet that target, it exceeds it. But there's another number that deserves attention here. 380 seconds. That's the specific impulse Musk expects from the vacuum variant within a few years. Think of specific impulse as fuel efficiency for rockets. Higher numbers mean you get more velocity from every kilogram of propellant burn. Raptor 2 vacuum engines already achieve around 380 seconds while producing 258 tons of thrust. Raptor 3 vacuum variants are projected at 306 tons. Now, if the sea level Raptor 4 reaches 330 tons, what does that suggest about the vacuum version? We're likely looking at something north of 350 tons while maintaining or improving that 380-second efficiency. These gains don't just add up, they multiply. More thrust means heavier payloads. Better specific impulse extends mission range. Together, they unlock destinations and mission profiles that current Starship variants simply cannot attempt. But here's where it gets really interesting. Musk also dropped another figure during that conversation. Cost. He stated Raptor 4 should outperform Merlin by more than 10 times in cost per ton of thrust. The original Raptor 1 cost less than $1 million per unit. Raptor 4 is projected to hit around $500,000 per engine in the near term, with potential to drop below $250,000 long term. Now, some might hear that and think it's pure fantasy. How do you cut costs in half while simultaneously increasing power by nearly 20%? The answer lies in something SpaceX has been perfecting for years, design simplification through integration. Right now, raw materials alone eat up a massive chunk of each engine's budget. Those high nickel super alloys used in combustion chambers and nozzles, they can approach $100,000 per engine just for the materials. Add in advanced components, engine controllers, pressure sensors, instruments that must survive cryogenic temperatures, extreme vibration, and crushing pressure, and costs climb fast. Every single part undergoes extensive testing and qualification. But SpaceX isn't trying to find cheaper materials. They're eliminating components entirely. The pipeless approach introduced with Raptor 3 integrated most tubing directly into the engine body. Fewer parts mean fewer failure points, less weight, and reduced material consumption. What if you could replace bolted flanges between the thrust chamber and hot gas manifold with welded joints? You'd save weight and labor while improving reliability. We've already seen this philosophy at work with Super Heavy's titanium grid fins, which switch from complex hydraulic systems to simpler electric actuators. This is where SpaceX's strategy diverges sharply from traditional aerospace thinking. Most companies optimize individual components to perfection, SpaceX optimizes the entire production system. As volume increases, unit costs plummet. Automation handles repetitive inspection and assembly tasks, cutting production costs by 20 to 30% while freeing engineers to focus on critical design work. 
And then there's reusability, the ultimate cost multiplier. Each Raptor generation has become more cost-effective per ton of thrust while simultaneously increasing power and reliability. Raptor 3 already showed a cleaner layout with fewer external fittings than Raptor 2. Raptor 4 continues that progression. Simpler, stronger, more efficient. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, or rather the competitor trying to catch up. Blue Origin's BE-4 started its development journey with about 250 tons of thrust at sea level for a brief window that gave it an edge over early Raptor versions. But that advantage evaporated the moment Raptor 3 arrived, reaching 280 tons before it even completed its first flight. The gap that Blue Origin worked years to establish? Gone in one generation. To their credit, Blue Origin didn't stand still. Following two new Glenn launches in 2025, they announced an upgraded B-4 for future flights. Test stand data showed the engine hitting about 283 tons with a goal of 290 tons. They also made a strategic move on the leadership front, appointing Tori Bruno, former CEO of ULA, as president of national security. Bruno brings over a decade of experience working with the BE-4, and his presence should strengthen Blue Origin's position in the defense launch market. But here's the critical question. Does securing contracts close the technology gap? The U.S. Space Force and other government customers don't just want reliability. They want high performance combined with cost efficiency. That balance is what SpaceX has been refining through constant iteration and frequent testing. Blue Origin's approach remains fundamentally different. They conduct thorough ground testing, exhaustive testing really, but ground tests can't fully replicate flight conditions. With fewer launch opportunities, BE-4 improvements progress more slowly. Even with new leadership and strategic partnerships, Blue Origin faces a structural challenge. Their development cycle is measured in years, while SpaceX's is measured in months. SpaceX's response to BE-4's upgrade? They could introduce a Raptor 3X variant approaching 300 tons without even deploying Raptor 4. With Raptor 4, the performance gap doesn't just widen, it becomes a chasm, but raw thrust figures only tell part of the story. What matters more is total system capability. Starship clusters 33 Raptors at liftoff. New Glenn uses seven BE-4s. That architectural difference means Starship's total thrust exceeds New Glenn's by a massive margin, regardless of incremental BE-4 improvements. Even if Blue Origin matched Raptor 4's per engine performance tomorrow, they'd still be pushing one-fifth the total thrust. Then there's the complexity factor. BE-4 uses oxygen-rich stage combustion, an advanced but intricate cycle. Complex engines require longer manufacturing times, more extensive quality control, and more thorough post-flight inspection. Raptor has moved in exactly the opposite direction. From Raptor 1 to Raptor 2, SpaceX removes small, fragile components. From Raptor 2 to Raptor 3, they eliminated additional complexity. The result? An engine that's easier to build, simpler to inspect, and faster to refurbish. Even with its relative complexity, Raptor 2 reached approximately one engine per day at peak production. Raptor 3, with its simplified design, could scale to multiple engines daily. Raptor 4, if further streamlined, could push production rates even higher. Before production hasn't demonstrated anything close to that tempo, the 10-month gap between New Glenn's first and second launches tells you everything about how complexity constrains operations. Yes, BE-4 also had to support ULA's Vulcan Centaur program, but delays in delivery highlighted fundamental logistical issues. Production bottlenecks don't just slow down development, they limit what missions you can even attempt. This is where the engine gap translates into a mission capability gap. Starship's design enables missions that New Glenn simply cannot perform. Full reusability slashes operational costs compared to expendable or partially reusable architectures. Higher payload capacity allows larger satellites or multiple payloads per launch. SpaceX has already outlined missions that depend entirely on these capabilities. Lunar landings for NASA's Artemis program require multiple refueling flights in orbit. Mars missions demand even more propellant transfers. Point-to-point -point Earth transport relies on rapid reuse and low costs. None of these applications work without engines that can fly frequently and cheaply. 
Raptor 4 isn't just a component, it's the foundation of an entire operational model built on high flight rates, rapid turnaround, and minimal refurbishment. BE-4, by contrast, supports a different vision. New Glenn targets the traditional satellite launch market and select government missions. It doesn't attempt full reusability. It doesn't plan for orbital refueling. It's engineered for reliability and performance in conventional launch profiles. That's actually a viable business model, especially with Tori Bruno strengthening Blue Origin's credibility in national security launches. Government customers value predictability and mission assurance above all else. Bruno brings exactly that credibility, but it's a limited market. Commercial satellite launches and national security space launch missions together represent perhaps 30 to 40 flights per year globally, split among multiple providers. Meanwhile, SpaceX generates internal launch demand through Starlink alone, over 50 flights annually just for Constellation deployment. That internal demand doesn't just fund engine development, it subsidizes production scaling and enables pricing that external customers cannot match. This is the structural advantage SpaceX has built brick by brick. Raptor development gets funded by operational revenue from Falcon 9 and Starlink. The company doesn't need to wait for customer contracts to justify the next iteration. They can afford to fail fast, learn faster, and iterate constantly. Starship version 3, powered by Raptor 3 engines, is expected to fly in early 2026 aboard Flight 12. That mission will serve as a crucial test of whether SpaceX can deliver the performance improvements projected for this generation. A successful flight would likely accelerate Raptor 4 development, pushing the program closer to large-scale production. And that's when things get really interesting. When production rates climb and costs continue dropping while performance keeps increasing. So here's what this really comes down to. SpaceX isn't just building a more powerful engine. They're building a system that makes their competitors' traditional approach look obsolete. 330 tons of thrust at potentially half the cost of previous generations. That's not an incremental improvement. That's a paradigm shift. While Blue Origin focuses on perfecting individual launches and securing government contracts, SpaceX is playing a completely different game. They're building the infrastructure for Mars missions, lunar bases, and global point-to-point -point transport. They're launching Starlink satellites every few days, generating revenue that funds the next iteration of Raptor before the current one even finishes testing. The BE-4 might be a fine engine. Tori Bruno might bring valuable experience to Blue Origin's national security efforts, but none of that addresses the fundamental gap. SpaceX flies more, learns faster, and builds cheaper. Every successful Starship flight accelerates Raptor 4 development. Every Raptor 4 produced drops the per unit cost. Every cost reduction makes missions possible that weren't economically viable yesterday. This is the compounding advantage of vertical integration in high flight rates. And unless Blue Origin fundamentally changes how they develop and deploy technology, that gap will only widen. The question isn't whether SpaceX will reach Mars first. The question is whether anyone else will get there at all while SpaceX is already building the second city. What do you think? Can Blue Origin close this gap or is SpaceX too far ahead? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. If you found this analysis valuable, hit that like button and share it with anyone following the space industry. And subscribe to Space Update 24 hours so you don't miss our coverage of Flight 12 when Starship Phi 3 takes to the skies in early 2026. That's when we'll see if these Raptor 3 projections hold up and get our first real glimpse of what Raptor 4 might achieve.